Okay, welcome back to the boat shop everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to build the engine well in your model hydroplane. We've been building this as a series. If you haven't seen the rest of the videos in the whole series, if you wait till the end of this one, there will be a little box will pop up in the screen where you can click it and it'll take you back to the start and you can watch all of these videos or subscribe to my channel, like my channel, like this video and you'll go to the playlists where you'll find a playlist on how to build this boat and others and races and pit tours and all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, the reason for an engine well, several things. We want to get, since we're racing this boat and we're serious about it, we want to get the weight, this massive weight, down low in the hull, as low as we can get away with within reason and uh, so to do that we cut a hole and as you can oh probably see by this is well I don't know if you can see that but clearly we can't sit this thing on the ground these rubber mounts on the ground because this is going to sit too deep uh, secondarily we need to be able to get the starter belt on and off of the flywheel Okay, you electric motor guys don't have this issue. Uh, but so in order to do that, we cut a hole. You can see in our boat, if you're following along on this build, this area here has been cut out as well. I know you say, wow, we're losing strength there. First of all, it's not a big deal here. We have a massive amount of strength. Uh, torsionally, is that right? Torsion side to side on this boat. Torsionally might be diagonally, uh, which this would affect. Uh, but however, we're going to add a piece underneath that will help take up the fact that we have removed a lot of material here. Okay, also I don't know if you can see this one. We have a nice piece of structure back here that helps the strength of this hull. It's going to be fine. Don't sweat it. Do it. You need that for clearance. I should have taken these screws out, but uh, this will ride right about here. And we will be able to get the belt on and off, I think. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to finish this up because I've noticed a lot of guys hesitate terribly. They kind of panic when I when I talk about building engine wells. Think, Bob, cut a big hole in my boat. What do I do? I will show you. We're simply going to glue in a few pieces. I've already made these pieces here. Yeah, they don't look like much. They're not straight, though they might look like it. What I did was I made a piece that would fit through this opening. Oh, by the way, if you're building our boat, this boat, if you're following along, Previously, I told you five inches. I'll try to get back and edit that video. Previously, I told you four and a half. Uh, but we are upgrading this to a five inch long engine well. Okay? Five inches long. I don't remember the width. It's in my other video. But I'm going to tell you as soon as I figure out how to get this ruler all the way through. Uh, one and seven eighths width. One and twenty eight. 30 seconds. That's the size. Really doesn't have to be that wide. Uh, anyway, uh, because we have radius this forward floor, flat to here, radius forward, in order to make this piece match the floor in its radius, I just cut a piece that ran all the way through and drew a pencil line on it. Over to the bandsaw we go, cut this shape sanded it until I get this look. Hopefully you'll be able to tell where it very, very closely matches the floor. I'm moving my head around, hoping you can kind of sort of see it. At the rear, the depth is going to be 3 16 of an inch. At the forward edge, 1 16 of an inch. The floor is 1 8 of an inch thick. So for the rear, it's 1 8 of an inch plus 3 16 in depth. And this part, we are going to cut straight. This part, hopefully you'll be able to tell now. And I don't know if you can see the gap, radius. Yeah, it isn't much, but truth is if you left that straight and it, and it stuck up above the floor, that really would be harmless. In fact, it might actually help so a certain amount of water wash from getting in there into that engine well. So, yeah, who knows? Maybe you just cut a nice big square piece and stick it in, big rectangle thing, and stick it in there. Uh, it actually give you more glue surface, too. How about that? I should have done that now that I see it. Okay. Anyway, the floor itself is one-eighth of an inch, four thirty seconds, plus another three-sixteenths 
and a tiny fudge extra because we're going to wind up sanding it into shape here shortly. Okay, so that's why you see it at this depth. Don't forget to account for that one eighth of an inch floor. Same thing in the front, one eighth of an inch floor. You can see where I did that flat and then I cut a taper on it. No particular angle, do whatever you want to do. Stick them together. Grab your sanding board or walk over to your belt sander and buzz the taper into it. And in a minute you'll see why. Hang in there, all this is gonna make sense. Trust me. <laughs> I'm counting on it making sense to me at some point too. I'm a little bit nervous here, but we're gonna flip it so it's not gonna matter. I'm actually pretty close to the edge of my jig. You can see the jig down below the bottom of this hole here. Uh, I really should widen that out, but I'm not gonna. We're gonna live dangerously. We're gonna mix up some G-Flex. One-to-one -one G Flex is really fabulous. There's a link in the description. Go down there and uh, get you some and catch up. Let's get this stuff out of the way. I don't need it. Let's glue those pieces in. I'll show you how to do it. Here comes Jackson Brown. Hi, buddy. No, I have no snacks. Why don't you hop in the bed there so that uh, I don't roll on you. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of brown in there. I don't know if you noticed a minute ago I had 404 high density sitting here. Um, no good. First of all, I, I just don't use this stuff. I got it one time thinking it might be great for something, but you know what it is? It's heavy. Why? Because it's high density. Why would I add all that weight? So if you need a, a tub of 404, let me know. A little bit of 410 is going to darken it. 410 is not really considered to be a great uh, filler. Um, it actually kind of weakens your, uh, your your mix slightly. Well, any filler does. Anything that you put into an epoxy instead of epoxy will weaken your bond to a certain extent. But the, the benefits of having a thickened epoxy stay in place outweigh the fact that you've weakened it slightly. I mean, it makes sense if you think about it. You know, I mean, epoxy, when we uh, when we mix two kinds together, is we're mixing, uh, oh, think of it as male and female atoms, where they uh, they find each other and they, they do a little courtship dance, and, uh, and that's why the epoxy gets hot, by the way, while it's, while it's, while it's curing. And, and, and eventually they, they grab hold of each other, you know, and... and the tighter they hold on to each other, the stronger your epoxy is. But if you put a filler in there, you're, uh, you're sticking a blanket between them and they can still kind of grab hold of each other, but there's, there's a blanket there. and Nobody wants a blanket in between. Gosh. Oh, I'm so going to delete all this out. I can still see it kind of oozing a little bit, which tells me that I didn't go too far overboard. All right. So now we're coming back with this stuff. And it's going to fill in some of these gaps that I left here because I did a terrible job of cutting it. As is my custom. How do we do? I think there's quite a bit on there. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit on here too. I know it's gonna ooze out all over the place, but we'll take care of that, don't worry about it. Let me see, this was the right hand side. Oh. It worked when I was thinking about it. Ah. It'll make sense in a minute. I know, I say that a lot, don't I? Might actually hold itself there, but I didn't trust it, so that's why I brought a clamp along. No, I don't mean it to hold itself there long term. It just, hang on, you're, you're getting ahead of me, so just... Don't panic.
show you a cool little way to clamp this kind of stuff. Yeah? Oh, look at that, it fell. We made spares. This idea worked great in my head too when I was thinking about it, but uh, uh, when you're shooting live video, man, you take the good with the bad. Seems to be working. Just trying to get this one up here close to the end. Kind of like that. I bet it stays now. Sliding this one forward and pull that up into place a little bit. This one is squirted up, so we're going to push it down. Okay, something like that. If you did a nice job of making these nice and straight, you don't need to clamp it a whole lot. Using my fingernail gauge, highly technical. Okay, we're done, right? No. <laughs> you know things aren't that easy. Get you out of my way. Now let's flip that over so we don't have to worry about that stuff running out. Okay, see how it looks? Kind of like that. You got any of these? Nice little picks for doing handy things. The end is great for making little fillets. Not enough epoxy there. Almost have enough on this side. Yeah, we do, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, not quite enough. See how that turns out? Hopefully you can see it. Don't know if you can. Deal. Could go another way here. I mean, we could have built these pieces and just stood them on top of the wood here, right? But. I like what feels like a stronger way to go to me to actually overlap it underneath. I'm going to flip back over. We're going to take a look and make sure those pieces haven't squirted around on us. Looks terrific. Okay, I told you 3 16 in the back, right? So we're going to add our piece here now. Remember we ground out a whole bunch of this material. This, uh, you can see where that quarter inch piece pokes through the floor there. And it's going to help add a little bit of strength. Plus we need to take up the gap. I have a piece of 1 8 and a piece of 1 16th ready to go. We're just going to set these right here. They look a little short of that full depth right now because we're going to sand this into shape. Okay. I left myself a little extra, a little more than I'd like, but that'll sand really quickly. I don't know if you could see that. Piggy and Ringo just came flying through here. Off they went. I'm done. Let's put a fillet on the end of that. Needs it on the back too. But we're going to deal with that when we put the uh, actual floor of this thing on. Uh, I may I may lift that weight off of there and do it right now. It should stay put. All right. 
I'll see you tomorrow. We'll finish this up. Okay, a couple things I want to talk about real quick. One is pipe mounting. The other is the rudder setup. I got some ideas. I got some stuff ordered. Hopefully we'll get to that in this video. I know this video is getting long and crazy and weird and there's tons of information. Little things happening. Uh, each thing is just so small I can't make a separate video out of it. Well, I could, but that'd drive you crazy. Uh, would Do me a favor right now. Just click like on this one. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't and maybe share this video with other people because this this is a lot of stuff I get asked about all the time. It'd help me out a lot if you would share it So I don't have to do it. Okay, so pipe mount. I'm running. I'm gonna run a uh, Nova Rossi 67 pipe on my CMB Why? Because I have it. I don't have the CM, the official CMB pipe. I might have I got a whole box full of pipes but this is just convenient for me. I made my own header that will make the this the Rossi pipe fit the CMB. I don't think it will fit the uh, the original CMB header. So run the CMB stuff or I believe that Bill Brandt at Rattlesnake RC, I, I believe he had a bunch of these custom uh, headers made. I will not make one for you. It's a pain in the rump because I, I have it angled and the head pipe is tapered. Super sexy, super cool, but uh, I'm not going to do it for you. Yeah, I don't know. Everything's for sale, but <laughs> it won't be cheap. Uh, anyway, typical muffler. I can shoot you a link of where to get this. Uh, the mounting bracket here. This is just a piece of half by half aluminum. You grab a Dremel tool and you fight your way into making a slot here. Two holes. This You can see that the rear hole for a screw to mount it to the muffler doesn't line up because this piece is off of a different muffler. I'm going to adapt it here and make it fit, but you get the idea, okay? And I'll show you how to do this. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll put that in the video. Anyhow, one bolt for now because I want to get the proper angle of this bracket relative to the muffler and the angle of the header so that it'll sit flat on the floor so you have some adjustability, okay? So start your pipe length wherever you feel you need to, about 10 and a half inches from... Uh, the weld to the back of the head Okay, it is a nice place to start and you're going to want some adjustability to kind of tune how the boat performs And we can talk about that later uh, when we get around to testing the boat. Uh, so this is how I'm going to mount it right here I'm gonna have to drill a hole back here right for the exhaust and Sorry, I don't have a super fancy way to figure out where that goes uh, What I'll do is like maybe lay this on here Look at where it's at, make a couple little quick pencil marks, measure the height from the floor where it is now, understanding that it's coming down at a little bit of an angle, so it's actually going to hit here slightly lower. Yeah, the beauty of the silicone tubing that's going to go in between allows some misalignment, but I think it looks nice to have it all real pretty and straight. So I'm going to make an effort. Uh, again, I'll make a you know, couple marks here, drop my way down here slightly lower than what it is right here. And we'll come from the back and we'll drill a hole, not with a drill, you know, because we're going to blow the wood up. We're going to use that fancy little burr bit that I have shown you before. I will show you again in case you missed it, which if you did, you should go back and watch the rest of my videos. You can burn your way through with this little guy here. This will move wood like you wouldn't believe. I use these little pointy guys here for burring holes through wood. It's quick and easy. Wish I had it marked. I'd go ahead and do it for you. Uh, watch my other videos. I've done it many, many times. You'll see it. Or maybe I'll do it. Maybe. Let's talk about the rudder. Here is the stuff that you get when you order a 60 size. You know, like for a boat that runs roughly a .6 engine. Uh... Yikes, you know, it's big and heavy. We've talked about this before in this video, I think. Typically what I do is I make my own. Make my own bracket out of 7075. This is one is a reject, um, but I, I had it, so I thought I would show it to you. 7075 angle aluminum, uh, 1 8 inch, and I use a 21 series bearing block. And obviously, the weight difference is dramatic. However, you blow the boat over, something really radically bad happens. 
Yeah, you'd think this would bend, doesn't, because you've got all this width. The bearing block will, it'll twist right here, high and low. Hi, Jackson Brown. See him trying to walk? Poor guy, you're such a good boy. Yeah, pretend you're looking at something wonderful so everybody can see your face, yep. He's doing okay, just, goodness sakes, those rear hips are just gone. Uh, anyway, so you get the idea. Uh, so I have ordered some parts because I'm going to dry something new, but meanwhile, I had a thought. Now we've talked already, I think, in this video about its lo the location, uh, front to rear, in order so I can get enough left turn. And I think this would work just fine right here. We have got ourselves an extended bearing block further than the uh, original unit. To get it back far enough so that my rudder isn't hitting here so quickly in the rotation and then I thought wait just a cotton pick a minute what if I don't use that drill out these threads so that I run bolts clean through it slap that guy on the side yeah Jackson's digging it check it out am I right or am I right Okay, now I don't really want the rudder that far back, so I want to, I really do want to kind of be near the back of this neighborhood, and of course I couldn't turn if I did that, so I'm thinking, yeah, here we go. If I'm an eighth of an inch off the side, and three sixteenths forward, I get pretty darn good left, and I think that's what I want. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab a piece of eighth inch ply, I'm going to lay it right on here and trace around it, cut out my eighth inch piece, glue it on. That's going to do a couple things. It's going to give me a quarter inch worth of thickness here that I'm going to be bolting through, which I like. It's going to give me my eighth inch up against here, so it's going to be glued directly to this big heavy transom, which I like. Because this thing here, I don't know if it's going to twist, uh, move, break, I don't know. So uh, adding a piece on here does a couple things for me. It spaces this over slightly, and it gives me a little bit of extra strength. Now you're saying, well, what's the difference? It's still not going to turn if it's eight. Well, I'm going to stop a little bit short so that it can still rotate. Or I may go ahead and take the belt sander to this. Can you see this little corner sticking out here? If that were gone it could rotate even being closer to this piece. So you get the idea. I'm gonna create a piece and I'm gonna slap this on there, I think. How about that? <laughs> I have ordered a different one altogether, whole different unit that I'm gonna look at first before I do that. Okay, comments, let me know what you think. Okay, that's two things really quickly. You're drilling this the same way that we did on our motor mounts, of course where you're finding the position that you want. And I have set my little rubber dealy underneath there, somewhere near the middle of the slot. I didn't do a great job on that. So that we have our adjustability. And boy, you don't need this much. Really, if you're ever going, if you start here at 10 and a half, and you give yourself, oh, I mean, you may actually bang this thing all the way into 10, depending upon your motor and your props and all that kind of stuff. So eh, give yourself maybe half an inch uh, of adjustment. Certainly that you can go in from 10 and a half. You shouldn't ever get beyond 10 and three quarter. If you are, you're doing it wrong. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of what we're looking at there. Then we're going to drill a hole. I'm thinking, I'm not certain. I think I'm going to glue a piece of tubing into the hull and just use a piece of silicone there. A long enough piece of tubing that when I put my silicone tube back here as a sealer, if I do need to shorten the pipe, shortening kind of reduces your torque, but increases the RPM, right? Well, I want to go faster. So you, you shorten it as much as you can while the boat will still pull the prop up from a crawl, okay? So if I have a piece of silicone tubing all the way back on this piece of brass tubing that extends one inch in there, and I need to shorten it a quarter inch, I'll be able to do that without coming off of the tubing. Does that make sense? Maybe it will when we get done. I'm going to do that right now and we'll come back and talk. All right, hang tight. Okay, so here's what we got. This is the angle. 
Can you see how this is angled a little bit that I need to come from the motor, you know, through the pipe and then have my mount sit nice and flush so it looks cool. Now if I'd really been thinking I'd have drilled the hole that I needed first, but hey, I'm just trying to jam through it. So here's what we're going to do. Oh, I saw it move. Did you? Or no, maybe just rotated. So that's the angle that I want. And we're going to poke a hole where? Somewhere around here. Right? Okay, let's do that. Oh, you're going to use a little uh, 440 with a lock nut. Yeah, is that going to melt out? Maybe, I don't know. It shouldn't be all that hot back here, but that's why we're also going to back it up with that. Which you need to do anyway on these screws here, or they will fall out. Here we go. I have not tried to disassemble this one yet. I hope it will come apart without a major fight. Let's see, how are we going to do it? I think that's for opening walnuts. Ooh, that, that goes in there nice. Wow. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps they Loctited this in, wherever the builder is. I don't know. I've had this muffler forever and ever. Um, as we're talking, I'm trying, oh, it's moving. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. There's a forum online called International Waters. And uh, it's pretty handy. It's a good place. Uh, a lot of stuff comes up for sale. Uh, a lot of helpful people on there. A lot of stuff you shouldn't read. Uh, however, there's a guy on there whose name is escaping me that makes these mufflers. I will attempt to find it. I've already... Boy, did I mind. Ooh, I was afraid I might be wiping that off. I have not. That's good. Uh, I'm going to forget a lot of the different links and stuff we've been talking about in this video since it has become world's longest video so hit me up and I will help as I can okay let me tell you this I get a million a million that's an obvious exaggeration I get a ton of uh, emails and messages on my YouTube channel tons that's that's legit and uh, man I, I try to answer them all you guys but do not expect me to reply quickly because I just can't spend my entire life monitoring that, okay? So hit me up there. I'll help if I can. Uh, a very convenient way to go is to find my M5 Performance YouTube channel. And we can converse there much, much easier. Because I get direct notifications and all that kind of stuff, it just, it, trust me, it's a better way to go. We're going to make a mark on there, but I don't want to make a stupid looking mark. Because the odds are these holes, you know, this is just a guy at his house ma making parts. So are these holes going to line up perfectly? Probably not. So if I, if I press this in, having turned it around the other way, probably won't line up. So let's do this. I'm just going to... Kind of a brief little mark there. That's my alignment mark. Yeah, that's exactly what it would look like if I did it. Can you see how, how uh, burred up this is here? Obviously sanded the heck out of it to knock the, the flare. You know, you drill through this thing a bazillion times and, and everywhere that you drill through, it's going to flare out and leave all kinds of aluminum behind. And so it looks like he grabbed a a file and you know went around and knocked all those off hey nothing wrong with that and then must have run a drill or a hone on the inside and cleaned them out inside there's nice work um, then you took a little 3m pad and stick it inside that's going to work for about an hour uh, but uh, you know your sanctioning body your club whatever they're going to feel good about you having made the effort i just spun it around okay that one lines up ah see how it's off ever so slightly Perfection is just not going to happen on these kind of things. Uh, so let's uh, let's start by drilling our hole in here, and then we'll bolt it back on there, and we'll drill our hole in there.
bolt it back on. Maybe I'll just hold it back in place. Let's go drill. I know it's not exactly centered on here. You're thinking, yeah, it's off center, but that, that's because this, because of having to angle it. I'll show you in a minute. It's angled on a round piece, right? So, so it, it moves away from the high point of the round and I'm trying to make it line back up. I might actually have gone the wrong way. Let's look. You guys are distracting me. So that's the forward spot. Yeah, 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 no, see it goes up. Here, can you, can you see it? Okay, if I hold it straight on the, on the pipe, now it's touching in the midpoint of this piece here, right? As it moves up, hopefully this is lining up. See how that touch point drops? So that's why I moved it down a little bit. You can only go so far because of the head of the screw, and I'm only guessing anyway, but I think that's about right. Ultra precision not required. Something just fell. It's kind of breezy. Okay. Wrong drawer. Right drawer. You know my rule. Always go in and taper it slightly. Ooh, don't think it can reach. But look at this cute little guy. A McMaster car is where this set came from. You notice more drills in here now? Yeah, I went to an estate sale. <laughs> yeah, they're cheap, but I got it super cheap. Bunch of stuff. These, these, um, these. Another set. Where'd it go? Anyway, another set of uh, numbered drills. Get you some if you don't have them. Get them. Go get them. Okay. Remember our alignment here. Come on. Come on now. People are waiting. Oh, really? It threaded through the case? That, that's not a great idea. I might drill that out. Oh, okay. It does spin in there. No, it doesn't. It's threaded through the case. That is a terrible idea. Okay, so we're going to line that up. I think I'm just going to hold it and hope I can drill that. Right? Let's try it. This would be fun. And dangerous. Don't try this at home. Oh, this is so stupid. Victory is mine. That's actually the right way to do it. By that, I mean you're, if you're, you know what I'm talking about? Theoretically, if you're trying to tighten this screw into this piece and pull the two pieces tightly together, you wouldn't want to thread into this component. You would want to drill clean through that component and then only have threads here. However, I'm not going to change it. I mean, so what? Okay, now we're ready over here, but let's cut this off first. I know it's not going to be super symmetrical like it was before. You know, with equal taper on each side. I just don't want to leave all that excess over here. Don't forget, always wear gloves when you're doing this kind of stuff. Do uh, as I say, not as I do. Uh, let's go this way. <laughs> Oh, that looks stupid. Gonna try to apply some beautification here. I don't want to take more because I don't want it to get weak. Ringo! How you doing, little buddy? 
<laughs> Say hello to everybody. He's a good boy. All right, now this part here, you're really gonna hate me for this. Um, first of all. Yeah, I know I've got that one. It's an Andy Brown, but it, it's all beat up. Great pipe. Just not gonna use it. This part's tricky, man. Uh, but let's go ahead and apply a little dab of this, making an assumption that we're going to be successful. Oh, here's what we'll do. We'll go through here, that'll hold it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ought to be enough. This is a whole lot of fun. I'm trying to get this to line up. Come back. Okie dokie. Uh, here's an idea. Maybe. What are the odds? You know, it'd probably be cool. There's a little bit of silicone on there. Something like that. There she is. Nobody move. Got it. I think it's going in. Can you see any of that? Uh, I, I don't know when it's lining up, so I'm going to swing it back and forth. Okay, lock nut down in there. Red lock tight. And away we go. I know you could just put silicone silicone tubing on there and just let this thing dangle inside the boat and let it bounce around and hope it stays and drill the hole out the back and say, well, there we go. I did the best I could. Um, but this is just a really nice way to keep it positively located and make your adjustments stay. You know, your pipe scoots around and you wonder why the boat won't go and then you check it and it's scootered into nine and a half. Not going to happen to you no more. I wish there was a convenient way to hold this. Okay, lock nut and lock tight, good to go. mark. Gosh, don't press it in with having that off. You're doing that whole push it out again thing. Hammer or press? Hammer. Always. I think I got it. Oh yeah, I'm shoving the strip screw back in there. I don't want to have to shorten one. Look at that. Oh, lined up perfectly. Got red Loctite on it. That snugged up good. I just realized I've made a terrible error. I can still deal with it. I'm going to cut a couple of notches in here to give the silicone something to bite. With these being smooth like this, you put the silicone over it and you put a zip tie on it and it still pop right off. You gotta give something for, the, uh, for it to bite into here. So let's do that now. This is not the way I run my shop, let me tell you. I'll tell you what. What? I just told you.
Uh, I want to set up a different tool that's going to give me a really square cut because I want it. This is actually, as you can tell, it's angled. So if I go in there now and I make myself a little bit of a notch, I, I'm I'm leaving an angle which gives that uh, that um, silicone a place to jump out of. So we got to come up with something else like that. I can see by the way it cut here it's not uh, properly aligned, obviously. Point being here the cutoff tool isn't perfectly square on the end because it starts in kind of in an angle but you're just, it's intended to be used to remove this part altogether. Not quite too sure how far to go. We'll go with that. Let's switch it around. Mm, yeah, see? Sun! A little regrinding might be in order. But not this day. Much better. Shooting for about the width of the zip tie, maybe a little wider. Okay, you get the idea? That way when I now when I hit the silicone on there it can it'll the zip tie over the silicone it'll bite all the way down into that groove and it'll be much less likely to pop off. Aren't we crafty today? Mm, 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 mm. Never leave that in there. That was dumb. Okay, look at that. Now that's a great part. can even feel the sharp edges. That's good. That'll make it bite. Yep, already drilled it. There you go. Zip tight. That'll hold. Let's make this hole back here. I'll be back. I'm gonna do that. You don't need to watch. Okay, fine. My spidey senses were telling me that you wanted to Watch me burr a hole here, so. I already started, but here we go. I came all the way to my low mark, almost screwed up there. Yep, whole lot of guesswork going on. That's our goal right there. Hello, 
There we go. Maybe you can see I'm angling slightly upwards and towards the center. Not much. And uh, as I was doing this, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to glue this tubing in because that's just that's just super duper inconvenient. Uh, we'll we'll leave it where this slips in and out. A little bit loose here now it is uh, desired because of course we're going to seal this and clear coat it, and then we'll probably have to go back and sand it out a little bit more. So I'll take it out a little bit further from what I've done right here, but you'll get the idea. There'll be a piece of silicone tubing here. Doing nothing but holding these two together. And I'm going to leave that tubing kind of short because my hope is that we'll be able to pull this spring off and there'll be enough room for it to slide back and come up out of there without having to remove the motor. Okay, there's reasons for that and we'll deal with that later on. Okay, there you go. Look at that. <clears throat> Almost ready to put it together. Flip this over and uh, cut you a taper here because we're going to use a nice little tapered screw that goes here. And yeah, your drive line is going to have to come out to get that screw in and out. But you're going to put that in one time, and you'll never change it again unless you need to paint the boat. Okay? So there we go. All right. Lots more to do.